All right, guys, uh, welcome back to Suburban Ranch. Today we're working on our 1990 GMC 1500 again. Uh, and we're gonna fix a lot of problems going on with the steering column. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what those problems are. And if you have any of these issues, I think this video should be a lot of help for you. So what's going on with this steering column? Well, we've got three different issues that we're gonna try to address today. The first issue is the gear lever. So the return spring is either missing or broken. So something's going on there. Um, so the gear lever just flops around. The second issue is the turn signal. So it will lock for a right turn, but when it comes to a left turn, it will not lock. So that should be a turn signal switch. And then the third issue is that the horn does not work. Uh, and I already took a look in there and basically our turn signal cancel cam, uh, which is where the horn plugs in is actually broken. So we'll be replacing that as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. First step is to pull the horn cover off. Um, so this just pulls straight out. There is a wire underneath um, that you can unplug right here at this spade connector. I don't have to do that on mine because um, like I was saying earlier, that cancel cam is broke off. So if you look way down in there, you see that just that little white plastic piece right there at the tip of my finger. Um, that's where it actually plugs into and mine is snapped off so it doesn't plug in anymore. So once we have the horn cover off, next step is to remove this uh, clip and then we'll take the nut off that holds the steering wheel on. So I'll go ahead and grab that with a pair of needle nose pliers and we'll pull it off. Okay, so we'll just pop this clip off. Next step is we will take this nut off. It's a 13 16 so We'll put that on. Got the nut off. Next step is to get a steering wheel puller and it'll have two bolts that thread in on, on each side here that we can actually use to pull the steering wheel off. So I'll go ahead and grab that tool and we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, so we've got our steering wheel puller and the appropriate bolts here. Uh, so basically this will push on the center shaft of the steering wheel as we, we tighten this bolt uh, and that'll pull the steering wheel off once we have these bolts affixed. So I will go ahead and slip this in, thread one bolt on each side. And go ahead and snug both of those up. Got both of those snugged up and then we'll run our central rod in here. We'll see if we can break it loose. And there it comes. So now we've got the steering wheel off. The next piece is just this little dust cover that you can pop off. And that only goes on one way. There's a little tab there that fits inside of the hole here. You can also see this white piece, which is where that horn plugs in. And you can see the big chunk missing out of mine, which is why the horn was unable to plug in. Uh, but we'll, we'll be replacing this entire uh, piece. And, and what it was called was the turn signal cancel cam. Uh, so the next step is to actually compress 
uh, this entire ring here. And there's a tiny clip in there that we're gonna have to get out. So once we compress this, it'll give us access to that clip and we'll be able to, to take that uh, clip off and then release the tension behind, uh, behind this plate and remove this next piece. The steering wheel puller that I'm using, this is just a, a set off of Amazon. Uh, it includes the, both the puller and a lock ring remover as well. So I was just using the puller along with these two bolts here. Uh, and next up, we're gonna remove what's called the lock ring. So we're gonna use this piece along with this. And I'll show you how that all works. Uh, we just thread this right on to where the steering wheel nut was. Snug that up. And then we put this forked piece on top along with a washer and a nut. And what this is gonna allow us to do is compress this lock ring and get to that clip I was telling you about. So we don't need to compress it very far, just far enough to get to that clip. So we're already starting to see the clip there. We'll go just a little bit further. That should do the trick. Now these clips are, are kind of tough to get off. Um, I'm gonna try using a couple of flathead screwdrivers to start with and we'll see if we can, we can pry it up. All right, so we're gonna try to get this clip out of here. Apparently, if you push on that, the horn goes off. Okay. Yeah, I got to... Uh... Let me get some picks. Just used a, a pick and a flat screwdriver and kind of worked it up um, all the way around and we were able to get it out of the groove in the back there. Okay. All right, now that we've got that clip off, We'll just loosen our compressor here. Make sure the center stud doesn't, doesn't turn. There's that clip. Here's our cancel ring. Again, just watch how everything comes off. Obviously, uh, it only goes on one way, so it has to go through that hole. And then this is our turn signal cancel cam. And you can see again, there's that broken piece, uh, which is why the the horn would not plug in and so we'll be replacing this and we'll share all of the uh, uh part numbers with you guys looks like it's also cracked over here uh we'll share all the part numbers that we're using in the packaging as well as we as we get the new parts out so once we've got the lock plate off uh we can pull the spring off and that's what we were compressing behind the lock plate and we can kind of see how this works too so if we are to go into a right turn we can see how that system will latch just over here on the right but on a left turn, we can't quite get there. So my guess is the system, this uh, this switch here is just kind of worn out. So we can latch in one direction and we can't latch in the other direction. 
So next step um, is to remove this Phillips screw and this is the lever that goes over to our stock. And we'll actually be replacing the stock today as well. All the lettering is worn off of it so you can't read anything. So we'll remove this one screw, pull the lever, and then we'll remove three more screws. So there's one here, two here. If you come up, uh, three. So one, two, three screws, and then this entire switch will come out. So let's get started. Then this little lever here should pull out now. There's a little cam in there that it rides in. So you can just pull it out. And then we've got three more Phillips screws to pull. And with those three screws out, I think this whole thing should lift out now. Oh, we've got to actually undo our hazard switch. Um, so we're going to need another small Phillips screwdriver to undo our hazard switch as well. So let me grab one. Screw our hazard switch here. So this just has one screw that holds it in. And then underneath your dash here, I've actually unplugged this turn signal switch. So it just plugs in right here uh, with just a one little clip and you can pull it out. And that's gonna give us some slack in the line so that we can actually pull this entire switch up. So you can see those wires are coming with it there. And that's what that switch looks like. Uh, we'll obviously be replacing this, so we're gonna try to pull these wires all the way back up through the column um, and get back with you in just a minute. Change of plans, we're actually gonna leave this turn signal switch. Uh, it's really pretty tough to pull these wires up through the column, but because we're going a lot deeper here, all the way to this gear shifter, uh, I think it'll be a lot easier to pull those wires up as, as we get deeper into the column, so we'll leave it for now. Uh, so the next step is we've got our clock spring here, um, and so that just pulls straight out. You can just grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers and pull straight out, so that's pretty straightforward. We've got a small T20 here uh, that we want to remove that holds our ignition switch in. That's what that looks like. And then we've got three additional bolts here. So there's one, two, three. Uh, and these are T30s that we're gonna remove as well. All right, now that we've got those three bolts out, uh, your ignition cylinder should just pull straight out. And then this entire part of the column, this entire plastic part of the column should pull forward. It's gonna separate from this piece here as we pull it up. And there is the plastic piece just right here for the high and the low beams that you're gonna to have to keep track of. There's a bit of grease on it here. So you can see how it sits in there. There's kind of a groove that it sits on right there. Uh, and as this pushes, as you, as you operate your lever, this slides forward and turns your high and low beams on and off. Um, so we'll just continue to make our way forward with this. Okay. And then there is 
this piece in the lever. Um, we can go ahead and unscrew our tilt steering lever. And pull this piece off. And right there is that high low beam piece that you don't want to lose either. This is the pin uh, that locks your steer steering wheel uh, when your key is off. So we've got a spring here that we need to remove. Uh, it's held in with a quarter inch screw down here at the bottom. So we can loosen that. And we don't have to take it all the way off. We can just work our spring out from underneath it to loosen it a little bit more. spring will come off of our pin. This pin will kind of float around now. Okay, now that we've got that spring off, I was just taking a look at this. I tried to push this pin out and it wasn't working because um, we need to get this gear off. So I'm gonna just place my flat screwdriver right on that pin. Just give it a few taps. There it goes. Now I can pull that pin out from the other side. And then this cam should come right off. So there you go. It only goes back in one, in one way because it has a little notch that it sits in there. Next up, I've reattached our tilt steering uh, lever here. And so we're going to remove this uh, spring that actually allows the wheel to tilt up and down. Uh, so to release some tension on it, we'll pull our steering lever and tilt our wheel all the way up. And then you can use just a large screwdriver here, a large Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna push in on this cap and rotate. There is a spring underneath it, so you'll release slowly. There we go. So there's the cap. And there's the spring. It's got a load of grease on it. Um, so next up, we're gonna take a look at the bearings and the races in here. Take a look at this bearing here. There is a little just cover on it, a little dust cover, I guess. And then there is a race in here that we're gonna have to kind of get out. There it comes. So I just kind of wiggled the column there a little bit to, to pull that race out. You can see all the bearings in there as well. Actually got to pull uh, these pivot pins. And so I picked up this little tool here. This is a steering wheel pivot pin puller. Uh, basically it's got a little threaded bolt that will thread into those pivot pins and a nut um, and that will, will pull against that bolt and we can pull these pins and there's one on each side. So we'll go ahead and screw that into the pivot pins. Eventually it's loose enough that you can just pull the pin out. And there's another one on the other side, so we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Got the pivot pins out. Next we're gonna remove this entire part of the column. So I'm gonna pull up here. feed all of the wires around it. Um, there's another mechanism right here, another one of those cams that, that kind of falls out as you pull this apart. So you'll want to be careful that you don't lose track of that. And I'm just going to spend a minute here kind of wiggling this out. That was just the steering wheel pin there. 
And there we go. So we are finally deep enough here uh, that we should go ahead and remove our gear lever. There's a spring down there that we're gonna replace. So we'll push this pin out just with a little punch. And then that comes out. So there's your gear lever. Uh, and this is where it pushes on that spring. So if you shine a light in here, we can see what is going on here. Let's take a look. Maybe it looks like, looks like we might have a spring that's broken actually. So I can reach in there and grab it. Yeah, I actually see two pieces of a spring here. So there's a piece. There's the other piece. So that's what was going on. The uh, spring had actually broken, which is why we didn't have any tension at all on the gear lever. So we've got a new spring. Uh, we'll show you the part numbers before we slide it in. And then we're gonna start the reassembly process and also replacing the um, turn signal switch uh, in that process as well. We've got a brand new spring here. So the part number is shown there. We'll go ahead and take that out of the package and see what that looks like. Uh, so that will be our gear lever return spring. So I'm going to use just a little set of needle nose pliers, feed it down into that hole where it's going to live. Okay. So this is where things are going to get a bit tricky. So we've got to compress that spring and get our gear lever over the top of it. And then feed the pin in. There's a, like a little cam in there. It's really hard to see, but basically, I think I can show you this end of the gear lever actually rides in a, in a groove there in the steering column that follows, you know, park, neutral, drive, all of the different gears. So we've got to get that in far enough where that is in the cam, but also we've got to get the spring under it as well. So it's going to be a little bit tricky here. I think I got it actually. Look at that. So plenty of return force on it now. Perfect. Place this turn signal switch. We're back under the dash here. Um, so this is the turn signal switch that we unplugged down here. I've taped up the wires just as tight as I can to the switch. I've also tied a string to the end of it so that when we pull it back up through the column. Uh, we can tie this string to the new turn signal switch and pull it back down. These are really, really tight to get through here. So you're just gonna have to kind of finesse it a bit uh, and, and wiggle it through, uh, but you should be able to get it back up and through uh, the steering column. So we'll get back with you here in a minute. So what we found is that pulling this plug up through the steering column is uh, right next to impossible. So um, instead of trying to ram this plug back up through the column, what I did was I just went in and cut the wires because obviously we're replacing this turn signal switch. And what you can do, all of these uh, wires are just uh, uh, have a little tiny um, kind of pin that you can push in in with your pick and you can actually pull all of these wires out on the new plug. And so what our plan here is we've cut this one off. It'll be easy to pull just the wires back up through the column. On the new um, turn signal switch, I'm going to take every single one of these pins out and then we will pull just the new wires down the steering column and then I'll put the plug on on this end. And so we'll show you that when we get to it. But first we'll pull the old one out. And I've tied a string here to it just to have something to pull the new one back, back through. This is the 
new window switch. So we've removed the plug without cutting any of the wires. So there's the plug. And I can show you kind of how we did this. Um, on each one of these spade connectors is a tiny little uh, kind of spring-loaded latch mechanism. And so all I did was reach in with my pick from this side of the spade, push down on that, and pull it out from the other side of the plug. Um, and that's gonna that allowed us to pull all of these spade connectors out. And so now we can feed these wires through the steering column much, much easier than trying to feed this huge plug through the steering column. And then I will just plug all of the spades back in and should be good as new. Again, that is our new turn signal switch. I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So we just um, kind of bunched all those wires together, put our string in there, and then just wrapped the whole thing in electrical tape. Um, so it's nice and thin here at the end. It should pull right through that steering column, nice and easy. You can see we pulled all of those wires right down the steering column. Um, and I've got my connector here that I'll push all the wires back into in the correct order. So we took a picture of it before we started. Also, I wanted to show you what the part number here was for this new turn signal switch. Um, so it's just an AC Delco part. See, we have plugged all of our spade connectors back into the big white plug um, down here under the dash. And then we'll plug it back into the truck. And that should be it on the bottom side for the turn signal switch. We're also going to do the stock, um, the turn signal stock. And this truck does have crews, which means there's one more wire to bring down through that steering column. So we'll do that next. Uh, replace this turn signal stock as well. Uh, this one, all of the writing is worn off of it. But like I mentioned, this, this truck does have cruise control. So it does have a wire running back down the steering column. Um, so to remove it from the column itself, it basically just pulls straight out. You've got to kind of rotate it as you pull out as well. As far as the wire, it's just a single wire with a kind of a spade connector at the end. I've tied a string to it, just like we did the last set of wires. Uh, so we'll pull it up through the column and then we'll feed the new wire back down through the column and plug in our new, our new turn signal stock. So the last thing before we start putting everything together, there are four bolts in here and these are external torques. Uh, the size here is an E8. And, you know, one of the common problems with this, uh, with this model of truck is that your steering column, the entire column will, will get loose. And it's actually these four bolts that you need to tighten. So if you're down this far doing other work, uh, I'd recommend just go ahead and pull these four bolts out. So one here, two, three, and one, one down here. Pull those four out, put a little bit of Loctite on them and put them back in. Um, and that way you won't have a loose steering column. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll show, I'll show you just pulling the first one out. And they weren't very tight on mine. Uh, I hadn't noticed the steering column being really loose, but you know, if you're in here, you might as well kind of get everything snugged up. So there's the first one. We'll put a little bit of Loctite on those threads. It looks like there was something maybe on there from the factory and we'll run it back in and we'll do that for all four. All right, guys, we're just starting to put everything back together. Um, so, you know, as you're putting this piece on, just be careful of the of the bearings here in the front. And there's that cam on the on the driver's side over here that you want to make sure this this doesn't fall off either. I believe that's for your um, I beams. Uh, so we just kind of slide everything back together really, really carefully, and just watch that everything comes together correctly. So we've got this piece back on here. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things to watch out for. So this is that high beam switch. So you can still see that that is working correctly. Um, and this is that other cam here uh, that that you want to make sure doesn't fall out as you as you get everything put back together. And so now we're ready to put those uh, pins back into the side here. And I think it could probably just be a few taps with the hammer to get these in. We've uh, tapped in those pins. Next up is putting our tilt spring back in. So I've put the uh, tilt lever back in, tilted the column up so there'll be less pressure on this spring. And we'll just feed that down through. There's a little cap here. And again, we're gonna use our screwdriver, our large Phillips screwdriver, push the cap in and then twist it. And there you go. So now, you 
we've got a nice spring-loaded tilt steering column. So we've got uh, this back together and the steering wheel lock pin back in as well. And we drove this uh, through pin back through that holds this assembly together. Uh, on the bearing itself, I'm going to add just a little bit of fresh grease to that bearing. So just, just kind of rubbing it in here next to the bearing uh, before I squeeze the race on. You could probably even add it to the race and then just squeeze that in as we put it back together. So next up, we've got our bearing race and our dust cap that go here in the center. So there's the bearing race. I'll slide that in. Use just a small flat screwdriver to, to get it in there. There, we go. there it goes. Just comes right in there next to the bearings. Then we'll put our dust cap on. We've attached our little spring uh, that wraps around this pin as well. Part of it sits into this cam, and then the other end goes around our bolt down here, which I'm just gonna snug up now. So I think that is everything in this area. So we've got our steering wheel lock, we've got our high beam and low beam, uh, we've got our bearing with, with the race and the dust cap set in. Uh, we've got three bolts to put in, um, and then we can move on to the next part. All right, guys, it's the next day here, and we realized well, when we were putting this back together that this uh, windshield wiper switch is actually bad as well. Um, the, the center part here is a bit stripped out. So while we have this shroud off, it's actually pretty easy to replace. It's just held in here with uh, a pin. And from the other side, you can just use a little punch. That's what I'm gonna do. And if we just push on that pin, it just lifts right out. You should be able to wiggle it out. So there's your pin. And then that whole windshield wiper switch will come out. Obviously, you've got the wires running around here. Um, so as we put this new switch in, we're going to run the wires the same way we did for the turn signal switch. Uh, we'll probably just cut the old wires down there at the bottom of the column, pull the old wires through with a string. We'll de-pin uh, the new plug and pull it back down with the string and put the plug back in at the bottom of the column. So we're just going to kind of fish these wires around that hold this windshield wiper switch. Gotta have it at just the right angle here to get it out. There we go. And so there's that windshield wiper switch. Uh, and we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll fish these wires through. Then I'll show you the part number of the new one um, in case you're also replacing your windshield wiper switch. So we've got our new wiper switch installed here. So we've got the, that one pin that holds it in place and then the three wires wrap around the front part of this column piece. We've got our wiring harness here that came with the new wiper plug. And again, we've just removed the plug. Uh, we didn't cut anything. We just uh, compressed the pins and pulled them out of the plug. And we've taped it to our string uh, that we pulled up through the column with the old wires. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to kind of pull this through the column. I've seen some other videos on YouTube where people try to pull this through the column with the plug still on it and they, you know, really have a hard time with it. So I'll just show you kind of how easy this is if you do it this way. So we'll just get it started there. And then if you look down here at the bottom, there it is. So there is our wires. So that's all there is to it to pull those wires through the column. Small cover on. You've got your, your high beam switch and the little cam right there. You hold the small cover on. And then we just slide this one on. And it should just go right on. Uh, I just tightened up these three, bol three um, bolts slid my lock cylinder back in and I'm going to tighten up that 
little cross bolt that holds the lock cylinder in right now. And then after this, we should be ready to put our turn signal switch back on. But before we do put that turn signal switch back in, we've got to put our clock spring back in and that just slides in right here. And we just press it in. And now we're ready to put our turn signal switch back in. That turn signal switch in position there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run the three screws in that hold it in. I don't think we've shown you guys the part numbers that we've been using. So this is the wiper switch that we used. So it's an AC Delco part, uh, similar to the turn signal switch that we used. That's also AC Delco. We'll link all of the part numbers in the description. The um, stock here, the actual stock, uh, I've got the part number here. So that's the GM part number. I actually had a really tough time finding this. I actually ended up buying it off of eBay from the parts place. Um, and so it fits an 8894. So you can search that part number and see where you can find it at as well. So we've got the turn signal switch bolted back in. So there's just those three screws that hold that in place. Then there is the little cam that comes over to your wiper switch, which just has one screw that holds it in place. And so I'll show you the operation now. So previously the turn signal wouldn't latch. So now we can see we latch turning left. It drops into that detent. Latches turning right. Of course, we've got our springy gear shifter now because we replaced that spring. The uh, We did do the wiper switch as well. So you can see those clicks. So it clicks all the way through. You've got the mist that's working as well. Um, so everything has really come back together. So the new wiper switch, the new turn signal switch, and the spring that we've replaced. All of our wires, our new wires are pulled down through the column. Um, so really we just have some of the real basic parts of the steering wheel to put back on. So next step uh, is to slide this spring on and it sits on top of that dust cap above the bearing. Then we have our turn signal cancel cam. So this part was also broken. Uh, the little stock here was broken on the old one. So I purchased a new one and there's the AC Delco part number. So this just slides right on top of that spring and the spring rides on the inside of this cancel cam. If you remember uh, when I took this apart, we were kind of over at this 10 o'clock position. So we'll put it back about where it was. Um, the next piece here is the is that ring that we took off uh, and, and it's spring loaded. Um, this, this spring is what provides the tension on it. Now this ring is keyed, so you've got um, this this kind of part right here of the splines where there are no splines so that's going to go right here on the ring so you can kind of just take it on and take a look so it's going to go just like that um, and so then that way we know where to put it so this these holes are facing at about actually more about the nine o'clock position and that's the cancel cam comes through those holes so put that back down slide this back over and we got it to align with the splines there it also aligns with the turn signal locking pin. So these are the, these little cutouts here are what lock with that turn signal, um, or not turn signal, sorry, but steering wheel locking pin. So next up is that clip that holds all of this together once we have it under spring tension. So we'll just slide that on. Slide on our compressor tool next or thread on our compressor tool. We just need to compress this far enough to push that clip back into place. As I'm threading it on, I can see that uh, the steering wheel lock is going to come through that cutout there. There we 
we go. So I can see the cutout where this clip is gonna go. So I just need to grab a couple of, I think just a couple flat screwdrivers here. Just work this clip back down the column. All right, we were able to work that clip up onto the shaft there. Now we just have to push it back. Okay, we've got that uh, clip or retainer snapped in, and so we can now release the tension. So don't forget to put your dust cover on. Uh, now we've got the steering wheel here. The cancel cam does come up through the steering wheel, so it comes up through that hole. So as you put the steering wheel on, just make sure that you're aligned with the cancel cam there. Don't wanna break off your brand new cancel cam. You just gotta wiggle it here a little bit to get all of the splines lined up, and there it goes. So next up, we'll put the nut on. Uh, the torque spec on the nut is 30 foot-pounds. And then we'll put the clip on that holds the nut and we'll be ready to hook up the horn. Okay, so we've got our nut torqued to 30 pounds. We've got our little clip on here. Uh, so next up is to connect the horn wire. So this goes down through that cancel cam. And you can see there's a little peg here. So you're going to stick that into the groove on that cancel cam and then just rotate it once you get it down deep enough. So let me see if I can get this in there. There we go. Make sure it's rotated. That looks good. And then we've got our horn cover. I actually got a new horn pad here as well. Um, so we'll just plug that into the horn pad here. Okay. And then should be able to slide this back on. Probably gonna end up honking the horn when we do this. Make sure that wire is not caught up in anything. Okay. There you go, horn's working. And that's uh, that's pretty much everything. Uh, we'll go ahead and crank it up and show you the how everything's working, the turn signals and the wipers and everything else working. Got the ignition on, I just wanna show you everything that we replaced here. So right turn signal, latches. Left turn signal, latches. Uh, we've obviously got our spring on the return spring here. Our hazard switch. That's working as well. Horn is working. So if you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work to this truck. And we'll try to uh, keep everybody updated on, on what we're doing. Thanks.